is from N.E. The street girl has great heart and hardihood. She has to because of the hazards in the street. The call girl is usually some brittle kitten uh, who wants to be pampered. And she, of course, uh, prefers the gigolo type uh, fellow who uh, accepts a portion of the money and who does not really control his woman. Holding a stable together requires the pimp to keep each individual member of the stable in apparent competition. The competitive spirit in women, particularly uh, prostitutes, is extremely high. So many unnecessary changes, girl. I am so tired and worn out. But you ain't through for the night yet, is you? You think so, huh? <laughs> Run your mouth. Run yeah, your mouth I know so. Okay. I know okay. so. Okay, you know you ain't by yourself. Yeah. All, right. All right. I'm mm -hmm. speaking for myself right now. Uh, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's right. You got uh, that right. I thought you had it once today. Hmm. I, don't you don't, got a lot to learn. You don't worry about, about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I ain't got nothing to say, my friend. I got a long you, way you to go smart. and you much more to do. Listen, smart, I got a long way to go and much more to do, but it ain't gonna be done tonight. Who uh, are you? Oh, oh, y'all, hush all that shit. I'm sick. Hey, I'm sick. I'm sick of, I'm sick of uh, Mabel. It's me that's talking to you. Scared to talk to me? Look, why don't we just look at the window or something? Here. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm disgusted. I just don't, you know, all of us, honey, all of us. Well, I don't know. Hey, where are you going? I'll be back, honey. When I asked you a question, you answered. The life of a pimp is unremitting tension and pressures. Uh, a, a pimp uh, lives on the precipice of disaster. I think he's the most hated and feared creature of the underworld because of his uh, the sexual aspects of his uh, profession. You're all going to be through if you don't be quiet. I became a pimp uh, primarily because of the uh, influence of of well-heeled pimps and other hustlers during uh, a period of dire poverty in my life. And I feel that uh, I was influenced by the flashy glamour, the uh, infestation of diamonds on these uh, hustlers, and also by their big flashy cars. And I wanted a sense of importance. And uh, I was a pimp for about 25 years. 30 years. When I first uh, got to Chicago, I had this wild dream of picking the brain of the town's top pimp, and eventually I did. In retrospect, now I suppose I could say that, that I wanted to be like God for a whore, you see. And my total image of myself was that I was some sort of black, evil Zwingali. My image among my contemporaries and fellow pimps and among whores was that I had class. Okay, meet me at 55th and Cottage Grove in about 10 minutes, okay? Okay. And what do I do besides supper? 
Don't you have to meet a trick in five minutes? I'll make it, I'll make it. Would make a great contribution to world peace by serving through the United Nations. As ambassador to the United Nations, I'm recruiting potential peace heroes. Mabel, you're gonna miss that trick if you don't get moving. Your strong body. The trick ain't going nowhere, Daddy. Don't worry about it, okay? Do the greatest job ever attempted by man. Now the future is in your hands. What are you going to do about it? You've just heard an address by Ambassador John Post, representative to the United Nations. <laughs> Pimps uh, who, who commit the violence on whores of a stable uh, suffering from insecurity. Uh, he's lost his power over that particular girl in the stable. The dumbest broad uh, will take advantage of that. Uh, normally, a pimp doesn't develop paranoia until after he's had lots of track action. By that I mean lots of mileage with whores. Uh, he, he gets to the point where he believes whores are so devious and so cunning because he's, he's copped and he's blown so many that his, his, his mind rots. And, and he himself has played so much con on the whore and he's, he's lied to the whore so much that he doesn't know a lie from the truth. Yeah, baby. Uh, oh, wait. Mabel, what's the matter, uh -huh. honey? I got what's the matter with you? Oh, Take care of me, man. Honey, Tina's sick. She got pains in her stomach or something, baby. Damn in the world under 22 that gets sick. Don't you know that? Now get out of my face. Chanel, she's really sick. Honey, Tina's really sick. We gotta get a doctor, baby. Bring her upstairs. He should be treated uh, as an ill man and as a victim of this racist white society uh, that uh, that makes possible uh, his street poisoning, uh, that makes possible the rotting uh, uh, inside his head. Um, I think that. Uh, what we need to do if we deprive the pimp and if young women can be dissuaded, you see, then the pimp is going to have to find some other way to make a living, like uh, till tapping or let him play the con on the white folks downtown, you know. If prostitution were legalized, that the top echelon pimps uh, would do well uh, because they'd have the 
uh, experience and expertise necessary to to organize and to open houses. Uh, what it would do also, uh, it would mean that recruitment would be much easier uh, for pimps. Uh, it would mean that the hazards, uh, now when a pimp turns out a girl, he's got to turn out in the street, more or less. Uh, with the houses, you see, uh, open and, and legal, uh, it would mean that a girl wouldn't have to be put through the kind of comprehensive training uh, that one must give a street girl. Uh, it would mean that pimps could just take a girl out of a, uh, hypothetically, out of a restaurant uh, today and uh, this evening, and tomorrow she'd be uh, working in the house. Because all one need do is know how to lie down and open one's legs, you see, which is not a bit like it is in the street. What is the life of a prostitute like? It's got to be holy hell. Uh, the booby traps in the street, the death traps in the street for a prostitute. Uh, her life, uh, the life of a prostitute is filled with tension and the pressure of the pimp. Uh, many pimps uh, insist upon a minimum. Uh, that means that a girl cannot show unless she's got a C note. C note, uh, if she's flat backing. Uh, flat backing means uh, just straight sex, you know, on your back. Uh, C note is the $100. Why does a prostitute need a pimp? Most of the prostitutes that I've known and the ones that I've controlled uh, needed me uh, because of my notoriety. Uh, they were uh, fascinated and bewitched uh, by my phony glamour, uh, the poisonous pimp charisma. And they lived in my reflected glory, so to speak. It gave them a sense of importance. The most brutal pimps, uh, illiterate, low IQ people, who enforces his, uh, his rules and regulations with his fist because he doesn't know the intricacies of psychology. The threat of violence has always been much more potent, I've found, uh, in my experience. Pimps and whores today are anachronisms in the face of the kind of thing that has occurred in, in black America since Malcolm X. He defined our, our enemies, I should say. And our enemies are both within and without. Malcolm X defined the atrocity that pimping is, that the exploitation of the black woman is. Long way from where you're supposed to be. What an asshole. I thought you ain't supposed to think. Uh, you know, Brother Beck, uh, your autobiography, Pimp, uh, uh, which you wrote, uh, it may have encouraged a lot of young brothers to become, uh, to become pimps. How do you feel about this? Well, I think uh, the fact that uh, my autobiography, Pimp, the story of my life, the book, I think it's very unfortunate uh, that there have been many uh, misguided uh, young black men who should know better, who missed the the whole message in the book, and that was that, that I was a pretty uh, bright guy, uh, and yet uh, nothing good came to me except the penitentiary and, and a hair on habit uh, and misery and the, and the complete waste of my life. And it, it's, it's just incredible that, um, but of course, uh, when you're street poisoned, uh, a youngster reads the, reads the book and he rationalizes. You see, uh, we must have a rationale for stupidity. Anytime we do something stupid, we first got to convince ourselves that we've got to do that stupid thing. So they rationalize, oh, this stud, um, I'm hipper than this. Uh, I won't get cracked. You know, I won't get caught. I won't, 
I won't go to, to the joint. I won't go to the penitentiary. I won't use drugs. I won't use heroin. I won't get hooked. I won't be a junkie. I'll be cooler, you know? Said the dude is righteous, but I'm more righteous. You know, see, I'm more together than this dude. So this dude is old, you know. You see, this is rationale, and that's unfortunate. Uh, in L.A., where I've been living uh, for the last 10, ten years, uh, just hordes of youngsters uh, approach me on the street. Uh, and they uh, try to pick my brain for the uh, hidden treasures they think are buried inside my skull. And uh, I always slap their wrist before they reach for it. And I try to um, dissuade them. But if you're street poison, I mean, you just street poison, and you ain't going to give up your stupid dream of something for nothing. I stupidly tried to get something for nothing. And any time that you try to get something for nothing, you're going to suffer one way or another. You know. What happens to pimps and prostitutes when they become old? The pimps become bookies, bums, uh, winos, dope fiends, but many of them uh, die in joints, penitentiaries. The women, uh, they become lesbians, pimping lesbians, I might add. Uh, bordello operators, patients in mental hospitals, as do uh, many of the pimps. Yeah, well, I hope this won't mind asking you in here for a drink after meeting you on the street there. No, I'm not having a drink. That's where is it go? Well, I think I'm entitled to have a drink with you since I haven't seen you in 14 years. Oh, sure. Glad to see you, too, behind that time. Yeah, I always had a, a lot of respect for you when, uh, when you were my woman. <laughs> I mean, when I had you, you were, you know, a commando. Oh, yeah? Behind 14 years? Well, I'm with you. I mean, I ain't pimping. I ain't trying to come back now and, you know, cop. Anymore. But if you're working, I don't want to keep the lady from, uh, from my well, work. Well, I'm working. I'm a nurse of age. I never thought you'd square out. You were working know, seven you, years. You were gone an hour for the game, didn't I? There was money in the day. It wasn't all that killing. Tell me, uh, baby, just, just why did you square up? When everything was getting rough out there behind doing 10 to 15 years of time to square up. And the way they're killing tricks out there, too. That's why I squared up. You mean the way they're killing girls? The, the tricks, they, the tricks, yeah, yes. Yeah, the way they're killing girls and taking their money. Anybody that we know? Them in the head. Sure, quite a few people. And so I just rather go on work and then be bothered with them. And then I got the 10 to 15 for selling narcotics and ain't sold nothing. You got crossed. Got crossed because I wouldn't be a pigeon. Because I never smoked and never used in my life. That's where you're not squared up behind that. I'm scared of dying. There's nothing happening in the streets. And whoring ain't no money whoring either. Because they don't want to spend no money. And it ain't worth it. They take you to bed and give you the money, and as soon as you lay down, they take it back, hit your head, and go on about the business. That's why I squared up. Might not wake up next morning. Sometimes you're scared, trust your own man, he might put a pillow over your head or something. So you know when you're working every day, punch o'clock, you got that bread. It's mine. And I got that every week. When they get out here on the corner and say, well, I'm going to get a loaf of bread. Man, it's me. So that's the way life is. But everybody wakes up sooner or later. Anytime you do 15 years, you wake up. Because you can't wear them bars out. And I'm here tonight appearing before you, a well individual, free of the street poison that put me into the kind of position where I brutalized and exploited our black queens. You have to have a realization that when you exploit your own kind, that you are in effect counter-revolutionary, that you are hobbling and crippling the struggle of black people for freedom and dignity. Robert Beck.
Iceberg Slim, ex-pimp, crusades against what he calls negative glamour. He encourages young black brothers to take a sister off the corner. Pimping is not where it's at. <laughs> Let me tell you, you ain't got nobody to fool. There are women out there that hate to be hurt. Men out there that are treating them like dirt. I said, let me take off. Get again. Let me take off. I don't feel we should use one another. We should be more like sisters and brothers. Let me take off. Say it again. Let me take off. Take this woman out the corner, brother. She can be yours if you want her. Take this woman up the corner, brother. She can be yours if you want to. I saw a guy I thought was very cool. He wasn't just an ordinary dude. Folks said his name was Iceberg Slim. And the fellas today are trying to imitate him. Let me take off. I heard him say. Let me take off. A man identified as H. Rap Brown by the New York Police Department has been booked on charges of attempted murder, robbery, and possession of dangerous weapons. Official sources claim he was shot by policemen following a robbery and gun battle. A 28-year-old black man alleged recently that for the past 10 years he has been a Los Angeles area police spy and that the police department in that city uses a complex intelligence network to provoke, harass, and entrap militants. According to the Washington Post, October 16th edition, the confessed spy, Louis Tackwood, charged that the police in Los Angeles and other parts of the state knew of planning that culminated in the escape attempts at Marin County Courthouse a year ago and at San Quentin last August, but did nothing to stop it. Angela Davis has since been charged in connection with the Marin County incident. That a special investigative section of the police department assigned him to make an anonymous phone call that sparked the raid on a black Muslim mosque in 1965. That he had sat in on meetings where plans were made to disrupt the upcoming 1972 San Diego Republican Convention and blame it on political leftists. That he delivered money and orders to Ron Karinga, chairman of the West Coast based US organization, to quote, take care of the growing Black Panther organization in Southern California that the 1969 Los Angeles Police Department raid on the Black Panther office in that city was planned long in advance with the aid of Black Panther Melvin Cotton Smith, described as the number three man in the organization, that he, Tackwood, had a free hand to do what he wanted, committing robberies and murder in exchange for his spy services. Chris Gugas, a lie detector expert who referred to Tackwood as, quote, an opportunist who would work for the highest price, said after carefully examining him and his story, that he is convinced Tackwood's ta statements have considerable validity. Exhaustive research by Washington Post correspondent Leroy Ahrens claims that Tackwood had been in many of the places at the times he said he had been. The police acknowledged that Tackwood was an informer, but they quickly ridiculed all of his accusations. Said Los Angeles Police Chief Edward Davis, quote, I am surprised to hear Los Angeles reporters listening to it. He calls the San Diego Republican Convention allegation the work of, quote, a Bolshevik. Recognizing the need for equal opportunities in the field of radio and television for blacks, AWARE, the Association of Wives of Announcers and Radio Executives, was organized this year. They hope that their efforts will improve working conditions of minorities and encourage a balanced interpretation of the news. A benefit dinner is scheduled in Washington, D.C. on November 19th to aid them in making their goals a reality. It will be called the Aware Affair, and all proceeds will go to the preparation of, quote, our painfully necessary goals. Dr. Joseph C. Page, director of the D.C. Cooperative Extension Service and dean of community education at Federal City College in Washington, has announced that the college's extension service will offer a new course this fall using the Black Journal series as a study guide. The course is titled, The Black Journal, A Black Experience in Media. It will be taught throughout Washington, D.C. as a part of Federal City College's outside degree program. 45 years ago, on November 5, 1926, 
Carter G. Woodson, a black historian, initiated the first Black History Week. This year's celebration, uh, blacks are celebrating their unity and self-awareness across the country with the third annual observance of National Black Solidarity Day. The Solidarity Day celebration was kicked off Sunday in New York City with a rally. The main speakers, Congressman Charles Rangel and Imamu Baraka, head of the Committee for a Unified Newark, call for unity among blacks as the first step to freedom. The president and representatives of the Southwest African People's Organization of Namibia visited Harlem last week as part of a cross-continent campaign to enlist the help of black people. Formerly called Southwest Africa under German rule, Namibia was taken over by the apartheid South African government. Since then, their freedom fighters have engaged in a continual struggle. The World Court and the United Nations General Assembly have ruled the South African takeover illegal and it is currently the subject of a UN Security Council debate. Send your letters and requests for our free teach brochure to Black Journal, 10 Columbus Circle, New York. Next week, three leading black economists will discuss black economics and economic racism. Until then. <laughs>